the place you grow up and the style of waves that you grow up surfing definitely molds you. And that's what Durban's done for me. When I initially took off on the wave, I thought, oh, this is gonna be the wave of the day. And pulled into the barrel and the next thing, the whole lip just landed right on the side of me. I think I really realized it was serious when I woke up the next morning and could barely walk. When I woke up the next morning and realized I had to get surgery, everything kind of sunk in. It was a torn LCL grade three and my post-lateral corner needed reconstruction. I think once I'd had the surgery, just kind of coming to realization that I wasn't gonna be able to do the rest of the tour, I was gonna slip out of the top five, I wasn't gonna be able to do the Olympics, was a hard pill to swallow, but at the same time, it really made me focus on what was in front of me, and that was my rehab. Just wanted to put my head down and work as hard as I could to get back to, you know, what I love. Going back and forth to the surgeon with my physio and the trainers, and they just couldn't believe at the pace that I was recovering. And that sort of re-motivated me, you know, mentally. Getting back into the water for the first time, it was honestly a dream come true, especially at one of my favorite locations in the world. The amount of hard work that I'd put in and the amount of hours that I'd spent getting to that point was something I fought for. Dancing through your downfall We've been going strong for you Now I wonder what for To the sunset, six soul slipping. Wheels falling off, cause the light's so vivid. Oh, come with the force, see you like cold fish. You can fly the torch on my mind, gold miss. We've been riding course, you can have that too. Just pack a skateboard gang, and we can bang that loop. Off commission, baby, this the cause of collision. Baby, this your vision. vision. vision.
I think becoming a new father really made me focus a lot more and any time that I'd spend away from him, I'd, I want to make it count. The five, six, seven hours a day that I was putting in, I really was pushing my best to make sure that, you know, I wasn't taking anything away from him. I really want to be there for him at every moment, but the times that I'm working and I'm doing the things that I've got to do, I'm doing it with everything I have. After the three month mark, I basically just started looking at the charts and chasing swells up and down the coast. It was like I was 10 years old again and just couldn't get enough of it. Obviously now I've been surfing a bunch and gonna be returning back to Hawaii. I've had a few little trial runs at some contests, made a final. I'm really, really excited to get back to Hawaii. It's somewhere I feel very comfortable, just frothing to get back into that warm water and some heavy water waves.
Reflecting on a record-setting space flight, an update on pre-launch activities for Artemis 1, and launching the first private astronaut mission to the International Space Station, a few of the stories to tell you about this week at NASA. NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei is safely back on Earth following his record-setting 355-day mission aboard the International Space Station, the longest single space flight in history by an American astronaut. Our Johnson Space Center hosted a virtual news conference on April 5th, during which Vandehei reflected on his mission. It was not about any record for me at all. It's just the opportunity to, to work with a really good sense of purpose in a job where we get to help out all of humanity. The number of days was not that important to me, and I think that helped me react to whether it was going to be comfortable with it being either a shorter mission or a longer mission like it turned out to be. Data from Vandehei's mission will help us prepare for the effects of long-duration spaceflight on the human body as we continue our plans to return astronauts to the moon under the Artemis program in preparation for eventual human missions to Mars. As of April 5th, teams at our Kennedy Space Center were preparing for the next attempt at the Artemis 1 wet dress rehearsal test with our Space Launch System rocket and Orion spacecraft, pending range availability and restoration of propellants and gases during the test. Engineers did accomplish several test objectives during two previous test runs that will help prepare teams and the integrated systems for launch. This wet dress rehearsal marks the first use of new systems at Kennedy's Launch Complex 39B and is the last major test before the uncrewed Artemis 1 launch. On April 8th, the crew of Axiom Mission 1, or AX-1, the first private astronaut mission to the International Space Station, lifted off aboard a SpaceX Dragon spacecraft from our Kennedy Space Center. During the 10-day mission, the AX-1 crew will spend eight days on the space station conducting scientific research, outreach, and commercial activities. The mission represents both a culmination of NASA's efforts to foster a commercial market in low Earth orbit and a beginning of a new era of space exploration that enables more people to fly on more kinds of missions. Northrop Grumman and Lockheed Martin engineers recently conducted a final hot fire test in Promontory, Utah, of the abort motor built for the launch abort system on NASA's Orion spacecraft, qualifying the system for missions with crew beginning with Artemis II. In the event of an emergency on the launch pad or during ascent, the launch abort system is designed to safely lift Orion and its crew away from the launch vehicle. NASA was well represented at the Space Foundation's 37th Space Symposium April 5th through 7th in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Our Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy gave a speech highlighting our Moon to Mars strategy. There was also a panel discussion about our Artemis program working with industry partners to help build the space economy. Meanwhile, the team for our OSIRIS-REx Asteroid Sample Return Mission received the 2022 John L. Jack Swigert Jr. Award for Space Exploration in recognition of the mission's extraordinary accomplishments in space exploration and discoveries made at Asteroid Bennu. That's what's up this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, follow us on the web at nasa.gov twan.
I'm Nathan Florence, your host. I'm a big wave surfer, a YouTube extraordinaire. I'm a son of a surfer, a brother to two surfers. In this series, you guys are gonna meet some of the local talent that I think will be representing the next generation. To me, the Triple Crown is one of the most historic events in Hawaii. Our first Hawaiian world champions in surfing were crowned through the Triple Crown. Every surfer from around the world, young or old, the pros, every brand that backs surfing all converges into one eight mile location on the North Shore of Oahu. In the end, the Triple Crown is about celebrating surfing, which came from Hawaii. Imai is one of the mellowest laid back surfers you'll ever meet. But when that guy hits the water, something switches. His surfing does the talking. My name is Imai Kalani Duvall. I'm 24 years old from Maui, Hawaii, and I'm a professional surfer. Just got back to the North Shore, just pulling into Wailua now, almost. I think being from the Outer Islands in Hawaii is, is coming to the North Shore is always like, it's home, but it's not home, you know? So it's like, it, you're definitely never just comfortable right away. Maui guys have always been solid over on the North Shore. Like the past generation guys like Ty Van Dyke and Kaimana Henry, and for me, like Dusty Payne. He was the first Maui guy to, to qualify for the CT ever. My age group is definitely the next generation. I feel like there's already almost another generation after me of like the younger kids from Maui coming over here as well, so. I'm waiting for Nate. He's meeting us here at Haleiwa. Um, we'll just wave check and kind of talk about the waves coming and what we're up to this week. And hopefully he'll give me some waves at a pike. I'm a big fan of really technical surfing, like, like techie air stuff. And so when you like kind of like grew and got into your own and, and started figuring that out, like that's uh, the direction I felt like you went, like really innovative, really technical. Like, and growing up on Maui, you have the wind all the time. so like air camp every day. So, and now until now where you're like one of the top air guides in the world, I feel like. I'm mellow in my demeanor, but I'm really competitive. And that's not maybe something I show. When I go surf, I really want to perform. Like I've had that fire to be one of the best. It, it, it's just cool to watch your transformation in surf and, and see like, because you're just, you're pretty mellow, you know, like, and you did not care, you didn't, like, conform to a certain way of, a lot of guys, like, felt like in the competing space, they had to change their surfing to, like, fit event surfing, you know? But I feel like you've been able to keep your style, your innovation, and, like, free flow in event surfing. So, that's been cool to watch. Thank you, appreciate it. Like, I've always wanted to be in this position, you know? Yeah. Like, it's so sick yeah. when you, no, that's super coming cool. into it, and you see the Hawaii guys, like, that are right there, mm -hmm. and if they, they perform and just clutch up, like, yeah. no, it's the, definitely. That's some of the most badass stuff to watch. It's yeah. like, okay, how's this how's this guy, get, guy gonna handle um, in this arena yeah. with every person from the industry here, and it's go time. representing as a Hawaiian is a huge part of why I like to surf and to, you know, put in on the world stage. I'm really proud. You know, you always dream of having the moment of like, oh, like it's all kind of happening. And it it's weird to be in the moment. We all grow up dreaming of winning the Triple Crown, you know, or like 
any of these events and it's always been a bucket list of mine to, to do well and something I always look forward to for sure. When I first met the family, I was just driving through. Then I came across this painted house. I went in and our relationship started. I really feel good about the fact that people under all odds have decided to remain who they are. It is important that uh, you keep your traditions because your children must know where they're coming from. And that has made me have more respect for the people in the rural areas than the people in the city. They have enriched me. It is a privilege to have known the Demanda family, for I would not have had the insight that I have today. April 22nd, 1994. In New York, former President Richard Nixon dies at age 81, just days after suffering a stroke. Others may hate you, but those who hate you don't win unless you hate them. And then you destroy yourself. Nixon pursued Cold War detente and wound down America's military role in the Vietnam War. But he became the only president to resign when the Watergate scandal forced him from office. 2000. We were on the phone with them negotiating. They put us on hold, and while we were on hold, they banged on the door. They broke everything in. During a pre-dawn raid, federal agents in Miami seize Elian Gonzalez from his relative's home. The Cuban boy is later reunited with his father, and both of them return to Cuba. 1889, the Oklahoma land rush begins at noon as thousands of homesteaders rush to state claims to land in what is now the state of Oklahoma. 1970, millions of Americans concerned about the environment observe the first Earth Day. The demonstration becomes an annual event that's now observed around the world. And 1937... Get out of my way, son. You're using my oxygen. You know what I mean? Actor Jack Nicholson is born in Neptune, New Jersey. Among his movie roles, Chinatown. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. The Shining. Terms of Endearment. And As Good As It Gets. Today in History, April 22nd. Camille Bohan and the Associated Press.
Welcome back in our studio and in today's news, 